Welcome back on the Good Morning Artesia Radio Show. Joby Hodling joins us from the Pecos Valley Bassmasters. And before we get into the fish, we were just talking off air about the challenge that a lot of people are going to have buying tickets for tomorrow night's. <laughs> and I apologize, folks. If I got everybody all fired up thinking the volleyball was tonight, I'm, I apologize. It's tomorrow night, Tuesday night at 6. And then the football game on Saturday. You have to go online to buy the ticket. And you have to be able to show on your mobile device the ticket that you bought in order to be admitted into the Bulldog Bowl Saturday or the Bulldog Pit tomorrow night. So keep and, that in mind. And as we were, as we were discussing it, and just now listening to you. So when you walk up to a ticket to in Artesia tomorrow night at the pit, you're just going to show them your phone. Mm -hmm. And you said, why couldn't they just scan it? I think that I think you answered our question. It just dawned on me. All these high schools don't have scanners to scan the... I guess you could get it on an app, you would think, on their I think, phone. I think there's an app. That they could get on their phone, but it yeah. must be the issue, right? It must be why they're not allowing you to print the ticket. Of course, you could just hand it to them, and they could throw it in the trash. You could walk in. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, maybe, I don't know. maybe you know what? You're probably exactly right. I hadn't thought about that, Joby. I, I there's think probably, the probably there's no way for all these schools to validate these tickets. I think that's probably the problem. And so by going digital, uh, you, it, they won't. The schools aren't prepared to be able to scan them, so therefore that's why they, you can't print a ticket and take it because if they can't scan it, then they can't disval. You could just print a bunch of them and hand them to people in line, and then yeah. you know, they wouldn't be able to know that it wasn't. So that's got to be the, the yeah, reason. Yeah, because I was of the assumption that, the, that your ticket is scanned, right? which then... At the, boot, at the counter, at the booth, but a lot of... I mean... None of them have that capacity that I'm aware of. They yeah, don't scan unless, tickets, unless, there's, unless some, there's something on a phone. Uh, yeah, which that's, there may be. You know, but you're probably, you're Joey. That's probably it. They're probably saying we're going to do this, and the schools are going. Well, we don't have scanners, and they're saying, okay, well, they just have to show you the ticket. Yeah. On the phone, that's why they can't print out. Right. It. That that makes perfect. Yeah. Well, perfect sense. It it's makes. Not, but it makes sense. It's an explanation. Yeah, and that's got to be the explanation. Yeah. And that's going to be for all games, all the rest of the. Uh, Year. Yes, so if you want to go to the uh, volleyball playoff game tomorrow, you have to buy your ticket through the GoFan.co, by mm -hmm. the way. not Don't put com. Right. It's CO uh, or on your phone, and there's an app if you have an iPhone. Uh, I think Android, you have to use the mobile uh, website. Website. Yeah, there's not an app for Android yet. And then you have to show that that ticket was bought. So if you buy five tickets for your family, then all five of you better be there at the same time and then show that you bought five tickets and here's the five people that you're letting in with you. Right, right. And then the same for the remaining playoff games up in Albuquerque or Rio Rancho mm -hmm. for volleyball. Hopefully our girls uh, win tomorrow night, then they'll be playing 8 a.m. Friday morning. Mm -hmm. And the same thing for the football, all that's the right. football games. And that's, gonna, that's a big change. That's going to be a, a hurdle for fans it really is because as you guys were talking there's going to be even though you're screaming it from the rooftops it's going to be in everything on facebook people are already talking that's about right. it that's all right. twitter and instagram it'll be all over everything there's still going to be a percentage of people that had no idea yeah <laughs> they're going to show up and they're going to say what do you I'm, mean i can't buy a ticket i got i got my 20 bucks yeah and i can't buy a ticket i can't buy a and ticket that, and, and, and this it's one of those things where you think that everybody, I mean, it's easy to think, well, everybody has a smartphone. Well, everybody doesn't, number one. It's easy to think, well, everybody has a credit card. Well, everybody doesn't. That's right. They don't. So a lot of people deal only in cash. That's right. They don't want to have a card that they could lose or somebody could steal or swipe. or. So it just creates a lot of problems. To me, um, it's, you know, the percentages are probably low, I guess, on those things. I mean, they're, I don't know what they are. You would think the NMAA did a calculation and made a calculated bet, so we're not going to lose ticket sales enough mm -hmm. that would cause us not to do this. Yeah, if that makes sense. No, no, I understand. And at this point, you don't want people not to go to the games. I mean, you want that's people what to I go mean. to the games. That's but, what I mean. Uh, but the ticket sales offset. Uh, I guess they're not looking at it, or they're, it's a percentages. Right. So, and whatever. I don't know how they did it so fast. Maybe they didn't do it at all. Maybe they just did what I'm doing, which is wildly guessing <laughs> <laughs> but just said well surely you know it'd be less than five percent of people that either don't want to have a credit card or won't have one because you, you can't buy your ticket online with cash correct you have to have some way 
yeah. a form. Well, you can go there. through PayPal. Right, you can go through uh, those types of services. My, my very limited mm -hmm. experience in terms of numbers with uh, the Pecos Valley Bassmasters, and w which is why I'm here this morning, and with New Mexico Bass Nation is this year, I went, di well, two, three years ago, I went digital with our club, although I still made it available for those that wanted to pay with a cash or check. Mm -hmm. But what I found with within my own club was there were some that said, I don't do that. I don't do online stuff. I'm not yeah. going to do it. Yeah. And so I still allowed them to pay cash or check, but if I was the NMAA, they just wouldn't go to the game. That's right. Right? Because they, they right. told me, I'm not going to do that. That's right. And then when I uh, became the treasurer uh, this last year for New Mexico Bass Nation, uh, one of the things that I asked to implement and our executive this committee board uh, decided to do it was that. I said, let's go digital. And there was a that was a much bigger organization than the Pecos Valley. And there was a percentage of them that said, I pay cash. I pay with a check. And... Uh, we said, okay, you can pay at the event. You're going to have to pay a late fee, we decided, but but you can pay there like has been in the past. And so the same thing. If we'd have been the NMAA, we'd have told them, well, you can't fish. Yeah. And that, and just, that doesn't make any sense to me. That just drives people away. <laughs> right. So. Well, anyway, we got about five minutes, yeah. six minutes here before Clay and Buck come on. So let's right. talk fish. And, yeah. And then we'll debate this more, folks. We'll uh, be upset. I, uh, you know. Anyway, go ahead. Let's talk fish. Well, I... Uh, <laughs> Pegs Valley, you know, we're. I'm looking. I said this uh, two weeks ago. I wasn't here last week, but two weeks ago, I talked about. I'm um, thinking about trying to have a kind of a year-end banquet kind of a deal yeah. or a, 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 a get together for our club, uh, maybe a meal. So I'm still trying to look at dates for that. Those of you out there that might be listening, you might be seeing an email from me soon. If not, then we definitely will have a meeting. Uh, try to do an in-person meeting and or uh, a Skype type or Zoom meeting. Uh, the first part of January if we don't have something in November or December to talk about 2022. Um, just want to uh, shout out to our New Mexico Bass Nation. We had our two uh, members of New Mexico Bass Nation that finished the highest at the regionals. We got to go to the national championships. It was held in Monroe, Louisiana this past week and um, week and w in the end of the weekend. And it was Chris Bosley who won the boater side at the regionals in Kansas. Uh, he was the top overall boater. So he was obviously represented us as the boater. And then Brad Hoff uh, was the, at, at the regionals, he was number four. He ended up placing fourth, but he was our top New Mexico representative. So those two went to Louisiana this last week and they represented New Mexico great, did a good job. They both caught a limit uh, on day one of fishing and they were in both in the top 10 at the national championships on day one and then on day two they didn't find the fish as well uh they both only found they both only come in with one fish that dropped them out and they didn't qualify to fish the championship day but still want to say great job to chris bosley and brad hoff representing new mexico well new mexico bass nation and congratulations to those guys um and that kind of wraps up i mean we're at the you know, our season is over uh we're looking to 2022 uh both um uh, at the at, the, at our local level with Pecos Valley Bassmasters and at the state level with New Mexico Bass Nation. I I uh, agreed to stay on as a treasurer for New Mexico Bass Nation, and so we did have some officer changes. Uh, I wasn't one of them, but um, we're looking at uh, scheduling. We're looking at having meetings pretty soon with New Mexico Bass Nation that I'll be involved with and, of course, one of our members. And I think this year uh, Lee Johnson for 2021 was our director for Pecos Valley Bassmasters and he asked he told me he wanted to step down from that Mike Hill is is was the vice president this past year for New Mexico Bass Nation and a member of our club and he is no longer the vice president he stepped away from that but he wanted to be our director so we'll still have a director at that level state level and I'm going to be still representing our club as the treasurer and um, looking forward to fishing next year we've i've had a lot of interest i've been talking about it each time i've been in here with eugene mm -hmm. um that we've had I've, I've had several people i said a lot you know under 10 but still 10 10 or so people reach out that have not been fishing with us that say they're planning to fish with the pecos valley next year and i've had some members from other clubs around the state say hey we're because you can join a club anywhere you sure mean, uh saying they wanted to join my our, our club mm -hmm. so that was i thought that was interesting that we've had some folks that I got to know in New Mexico Bass Nation. They like how we run our, our club. We do have a lot of tournaments. And they, they said, hey, can we join your club? And so 
um, looking forward to having a good 2022. That'll be uh, that'll be great. And um, if if you continue to come in, we'll we'll update on that. Or if you need to take a break, I mean, it's totally up to you, Joby, what you want to do uh, on the fishing update. Or you could just come in and we could talk uh, bulldog sports for 15 yeah. minutes or so. If uh, it, it's on uh, Monday mornings, you're you're a busy guy. So if 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 it's in your schedule and it's Kith and Kin Day, so we get. We get something every time. Something it's on always Mondays. good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, we look forward to that. I know you're planning on being at the volleyball game tomorrow night. I know you are planning on being at the football game on Saturday. So we're uh, we're really looking forward to those games coming up. And uh, and it won't be too long before basketball. Uh, the girls' basketball team plays on uh, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And the boys' basketball team opens up at the City of Champions classic which is the weekend after thanksgiving right and both girls and boys are playing but the girls will already have had a game that's right as you're pointing out yep so that's all uh, that's all coming up around the corner here. and the state football championship which i think we're gonna i believe will be uh, <laughs> i'm with you <laughs> will be that uh, thanksgiving weekend thanksgiving weekend that's yep. right and then the the all-star game uh which is not north south it's red green uh, so it's going to be, uh, uh, there'll be two games, and that's the Saturday following the state championship Saturday. That Saturday of the City Champions Classic. Oh, really? And it'll be in Roswell at the Wool Bowl in oh, Roswell, really? New Mexico. I did not realize that. Yeah. That's interesting. So, so we that, may have some basketball players not that make the all-state team, or make the team not get to play. Well, anyway. Mm. Well, they'll have to make a decision. Right. If they're going to play basketball or play in that all-star right. football game. Right, so, right, right, right. Uh, and since Coach Mondragon is most part of making that happen, he's going to have to make a decision. <laughs> well, I don't know that we'll have all-stars, but it's possible. It's, it's always possible. It's always possible. Yep. That's right. Yep. Joby, thank you as always. Yep, thank you. And we'll see you next time. Stay tuned, folks. Clay and Buck are coming up next. We'll